Welcome back guys, this is Joe from the DIYcoldplunge.com with another segment of how to build your own cold plunge. There's plenty of resources at the links in the description, so check those out if you're interested. Today's video is all about spray foam insulation. First, at this point in the process, you should have your cold plunge framed and wrapped, your top panel cut with your stock tank installed, and your plumbing completed. You could even have your cold plunge sided at this point like I do. Check out my previous videos for some of those steps. I have links below for the spray foam and tools used for this project. I started this process out by cutting some of the pink foam board insulation that I had left over from when I built my cover. In hindsight, this would have been easier to do before I put the side panels on my cold plunge. So that's tip number one. You can see here that I tipped my cold plunge up on its side and kind of just started spraying as close to the top as I could. From there, I started spraying the little pockets behind the 2x4 supports, which is a really, really good idea, except for the fact that this spray foam will make a mess and drip down to the floor. So, tip number two is to tip this thing down on its back. From here, for me at least, it was just a matter of inserting the little slivers of foam board insulation and spraying the spray foam. I recommend starting on the bottom and covering every little nook and cranny on the base of your tank. Once you've done that, push pause and use the cleaner that comes with the six pack of spray foam to clean out your gun and let that first can fully set up. Then you can trim and put the excess to good use. What I'm doing for this is basically using the board as kind of the, the leveler for the saw. So I'll put this and always have a piece of that saw kind of gliding along a two by four, which should help keep everything flat. I've gone through two cans and I've learned a little bit about this foam. Um, one thing is you don't want to lay it on too thick. It obviously expanded. I took the saw, <clears throat> cut it down. We've got a chunk of this here. I'm gonna just put, kind of shove these spare pieces that I cut off in the different um, crevices that I have and just kind of keep, keep trimming this down. <clears throat> so there we go, another couple pieces that I can just tuck <clears throat> down inside here. And you're gonna see there are some holes <clears throat> that get exposed that we'll have to go back and refill. Again, there's another little pocket that you'll want to fill. After I was through the first can or two, I was on to putting more scraps in just as filler to help out the spray foam. And once you have the bottom of your plunge completely covered, the name of the game is getting down as deep as possible to maximize the expansion on that spray foam. Do that plus fill any voids that happen and you'll be good to go. I highly recommend going one can at a time and using that spray fluid to clean out your gun. This will allow the maximum expansion of each can of spray foam insulation, therefore getting you further along in this project. Quick walk through after the last can of spray foam insulation. Um, I'm gonna be going in and obviously kind of trimming up everything there, but I got a lot of coverage out of six cans of that spray foam. Take a peek in the mechanical area and kind of same story. There are a few different little pockets um, kind of behind here of air that I just kind of like built up um, layers of insulation just because I didn't feel the need to fill it completely. But if you do this the right way and don't waste that first can like I did, I would say six cans is gonna get you exactly where you need to be, especially if you use some scrap the way I did. And last, I'll share a bonus tip for those of you who didn't tune out just yet. I cut down little strips of the PVC material that I use for the top panel to act as a little air barrier gap at the bottom of my cold plunge, which should help with insulation and any condensation that goes through. At this point, if you followed along with my previous videos, you will have a practically completed DIY cold plunge. From here, there's cosmetic things like paint or stain, and of course, hooking all the plumbing together. And with that, I have detailed plans on how to do all of this at my website. So check out the DIYcoldplunge.com and subscribe to my channel below.